Hello everyone, and welcome back. Today we're going to continue our exploration of the MATLAB programming language and focus on the implementation of the one-dimensional Newton-Raphson iteration method. We're going to be doing the Newton-Raphson iteration for two different but closely related problems. The first problem that we're going to be looking at is how to find the zero of a particular function numerically, and the second thing that we're going to do is approach from the optimization perspective and find the optimal value of a particular function. For this implementation of the newton raphson iteration method, we're not going to be directly finding the analytical representation of the derivative for these functions, because technically speaking, that would require some upfront coding and hard coding on our end. Um, and since there's infinitely many different types of functions, we definitely don't want to code that. Um, of course, there are other languages that will sort of, you know, um, find the derivative and then evaluate the derivative. And for the optimal value, we would have to find the first and the second derivative. Um, so for the derivative and second derivatives, we're just going to be using central difference approximations um, for both of those calculations. So without further ado, let's get started. So the first thing that I want to do is look at, for example, the zero of some particular function, and you can choose whatever function you want to find the zero of. Um, but the function that I want to find the zero of is, let's say, 3x to the power of 7 minus 10x minus 8. Now, if you know anything about the newton raphson iteration method, um, we need to have an initial guess to start this iteration method off. So what I want to actually do is go ahead and grab this function so I have some reasonable guess so that I'm actually I'm converging to the right point. So let's plot this curve on, say, the interval from 0 to 2 uh, in spacings of size 0.1. So then I'm going to say open a figure, and then I'm going to plot these values. So plot x, f of x, let's do some uh, blue lines. Um, and let's also show the grid so we have, you know, a little bit of uh, precision in terms of the graph. Right? So that is our curve that we're going to find the zero of. And notice that the zero is going to be located somewhere in between 1 and 1 1.5. We don't have any other zero near here, so choosing, for example, um, 1 or 1 1.5, probably both will be sufficient um, initial guesses. So the number of iterations I'm going to be representing by capital N, let's, let's assume we want to go through 100 iterations. This is the number of iterations that we want to execute. Uh, the initial guess, for example, x0, let's actually just choose 0 just to see what happens here. So this is going to be our initial guess. Um, this h, and let's choose 0 0.01, this is going to be the h for the um, central difference approximations that we're going to be doing for our derivatives. And let's start off our iteration method by calling x old to be the initial condition. And then we're going to cycle x through x new and x old and not save all of our values. So, uh, for the newton raphson iteration method, we're going to be cycling from, say, k is equal to 1 to capital M. So let's create a for loop. So for k is equal to 1 all the way to M. And then we're going to create what we call an update function uh, for our newton raphson iteration method. So the newton raphson iteration method for finding zeros is given by x new is equal to x old minus uh, f of x old divided by f prime of x old. Now we're not going to be doing this notation because MATLAB first off doesn't know what f prime even means. So what I want to do is I want to approximate f prime x old with the central difference approximation, which we know is going to be equal to 1 divided by 2h. So the 2h is going to be reciprocated on top. So 2 times h times f x old divided by f of x old plus h and then minus f of x old minus h. So that is going to be the approximation um, to the derivative. And then let's display the value for which this iteration is actually showing us. So we're going to display the following statement. So iteration, and then the iteration number that we're on, so num to string, let's call it k, and then has the result equal to, and then we're going to display the results, num to string x new. Right. And if you're not sure exactly what this does, once we give this a go, um, you're actually going to see. And then once we calculate our x new, then we're going to replace x new with x old and vice versa. So x old is going to be equal to x new, and the process is going to continue. So let's give this a go and see what happens. So if we look at this particular um, results, 
So keep in mind, our graph says that the solution is going to be somewhere between 1 and 1.5, right? So if we look at these results, notice that the first few iterations of the newton raphson method definitely sort of bounce um, into realms that are definitely not accurate, but eventually it does sort of grapple onto things that appear to be feasible. So if we look at our particular graph, um, we chose an initial guess of 0, and 0, notice... Um, pretty much has a downward slope. So that tangent line is going to cross somewhere in the negative spectrum, and that's why it's starting off in the negative regime, and then eventually it's going to converge over to the positive realm, eventually. Yes, it takes a while, but if we were to choose a point that is a little bit closer to um, our actual solution, let's say 1.5, then you're, going to, of course, going to get a different result. So if we choose, for example, x0 to be 1.5, let's actually just see um, how fast this converges. So this doesn't really converge until how many iterations? Let's say 33 iterations. So if we do this initial guess of 1.5, um, notice that it definitely gets closer to um, the value 1.3225 at iteration 4. So you see the dramatic impact that that initial guess actually has, um, which is why you should you know plug in a bunch of points around the proposed or goal uh, intercept um, so that you actually get a very rapid convergence, right? So that's, of course, one of the downsides of the newton raphson iteration method, but with a little bit of graphing um, sort of uh, up front, um, usually choosing an appropriate initial guess isn't that bad. Now that we know how to do the newton raphson iteration method for finding the zero of a one-dimensional function, now let us switch to goal two and use the newton raphson iteration method to find the optimal value uh, of a particular one-dimensional function. And here, when we say optimal, we're either allowing it to be a maximum or a minimum, either one is fine. But of course, you can uh, fine-tune this to focus on only maximums or only minimums with some slight tweaks, which I'll leave to you to sort of figure out. So for this, I'm going to be looking at a new function, but before we get into that, I just want to actually comment out all of this code because I don't want that to sort of influence that. So in case you don't already know, if you want to comment out blocks of code, if you're on, say, a Windows machine, you can just do Control-R, and that's going to actually come out, uh, comment out whatever block you actually have selected. All right. So let's go to the second goal of finding optimal functions. Let's create a function that we find the one to find the optimal value of. Let's call it FP. So fp is also going to be a single dimensional function of some value x. And let's call this function, for example, negative 3 times x to the power of 4 plus 3 times x plus 4. Let's graph it on the interval 0 and in spaces of 0 0.01 to say 1.1. And then let's plot this just to see what we're looking at here. And of course, you can choose any function you want. I'm just going to particularly focus on this one. All right, so what does this graph look like? So this is the curve uh, that we're going to be looking at. So we're go aiming for not the x-intercept, because obviously we have no x-intercept on this particular domain. What we're going to be focusing on in this, is this particular maximum value here. So that maximum value is located somewhere around 0 0.65, 0 0.7, somewhere around in that regime. Um, so of course, if you choose an initial guess, say like um, 0 0.4, 0 0.8 even, uh, as long as that's you know not too far from that extreme point that we're actually looking for, our Newton method should converge. Now keep in mind, the implementation of the optimization perspective of newton ration is slightly different. Um, but keep in mind, if we're trying to find the value that is maximum or minimum, we're just trying to find out where the derivative is equal to zero. So everywhere in the old function where we see f, we're just gonna be replacing that with f prime, and everywhere we see f prime, we're gonna be replacing that with f double prime. So here we're gonna be approximating the first and the second derivative of fp in this case, um, both with central difference approximations, and you should be able to work out that algebra just in case you don't already know what that is, um, to figure out how this is gonna be implemented. So we're going to start off by defining our x old to be equal to, for example, x0. And let's again say that n is equal to 100. That's the number of iterations uh, that we're going to be using here. So let's create our for loop. So for k uh, in the interval 1 to m, then we're going to have x new is going to be equal to x old minus, so the leading coefficient for this quotient is going to be h divided by 2. And I leave it to you to figure out sort of why that is. And then it's going to be fp x old plus h, and then minus fp x old minus h. So what is sort of going on there? That is the central difference approximation for f prime. 
and then we're going to divide that by the central difference approximation for f double prime, which is going to be equal to fp x old plus h minus 2 times f of p of x old, and then plus fp of x old minus h. And then it's going to be our central difference approximation to f prime and f double prime of fp, um, and then the Newton refs and iteration method for that. So we're going to display, similarly as we did before, the value and the iteration number that we're actually on. So just copy this code that we had before. Let's indent this so it looks nice. All right, and then let's update our x old value. So x old is equal to x new. All right, so that is the Newton Raphson iteration perspective of the um, optimization method, let's actually also display the optimal value for this function. Um, so once we finish this iteration method, we're going to have an optimal value because we have x new to be our true value. Then we're just going to plug that x new value into our uh, f of p function that's going to give us our optimal value um, in terms of the y value, not just the x. So then we're going to display um, the situation optimal, let's say fp of x value. is, and then we're going to leave a space there, and then num to string fp evaluated at x new. Okay, and that is the newton raphson iteration method per, from the perspective of optimization. So let's give this a run. So of course we forgot to define what our initial condition was, so let's actually bring our graph up. So a uh, good initial condition, maybe we can do, mm, I don't know, let's do zero again, why not? And we can tweak it if we're not happy with the results. So x0 is equal to 0. So once we have that, oh, we didn't define h also. So let's go ahead and do that because it commented out above. No big deal. So that gives us a sequence of iterations. Um, definitely these first few values are definitely a little bit troublesome. But keep in mind, we're looking for a value in between somewhere around 0 0.6 and 0 0.7, which eventually does converge to that. So that's very, very nice. It just does take a little bit of time. Um, so sometimes around, say, iteration 26, it finally gives us um, some particular value. And it obviously converges. And the optimal value is 5.4, which is, of course, the y value associated to that point. So based upon this iteration, we obviously see that a, a initial guess of zero is actually kind of bad. Um, so you probably want to choose something like maybe 0 0.5 even. Um, probably would be a lot better in this case. Um, and we actually see a dramatic change if we use 0 0.5 as our initial condition. Okay, um, But that's how you can use the one-dimensional Newton-Raphson uh, Newton method um, for calculating the optimal value of a function where we're using the central difference approximations for op op uh, approximating both the first and second derivative. So I hope you enjoy it, and I'll see you in the next video. Take care.